it's heavy. It's a lot heavier than I thought it would be. Hey everybody and welcome back to Art a la carte. And today's video is part one of my journey to get a Glowforge machine. I was not prepared. Well, it's here. It's huge. And it's here. And it's gonna go there. I don't know if I'm prepared for this. For those of you who don't know what a Glowforge is, it is a 3D laser cutting machine. Think of it as a Cricut or a Silhouette, but instead of cutting different types of papers, this thing cuts wood and engraves on metal. This thing is a beast. I have been stalking the laser cutting community for quite a while now, and a friend of mine locally has a Glowforge machine, and it's fantastic the things that she can create. So after much thought and research, I decided to take the leap and jump in to purchasing my own Glowforge machine. I have a huge printer. It's a Canon Pixma Pro. This thing is massive. And I knew the Glowforge was going to be bigger than that, but it is literally almost four times bigger than my, than my printer. This thing is massive. Am I crazy? Possibly. This machine is massive. I thought my printer was big. My printer is about that size. Like this. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh my gosh, it's gonna, gonna take that entire table. So to say the least, when it arrived, I was a little overwhelmed. Originally, I was going to create a video where I took you step by step on how to set up your own Glowforge. I quickly realized not only was I overwhelmed by the size, but I was very intimidated by the machine itself. So I didn't want to make a video guiding people in the mistakes that I was going to make. There are actually some really, really good videos that take you through the step-by-step -step process that made it pretty easy to set this whole thing up. Now, Glowforge says you can set it up and start cutting in less than 30 minutes. Um, it took me about 24 hours before I got into cutting. Quick update, I kind of rearranged things a little bit. So this table had been sitting this way with the heater over here and I moved it so that it's angled up with my art desk and the heaters over there just because I think I have better access to the window. And I love the glowing buttons. It's time to make some magic. If you're new here, let's get you printing right away. So when they say right away, for me, again, it was like 24 hours. One thing to know about the Glowforge machine is that it does not connect to your computer via a cable. It connects via internet. And I don't have the strongest internet in my studio. So it took a couple of tries for it to actually work, but I did. It took about three or four times of it failing before it finally did connect. Um, but once it's connected, I haven't had a single issue with the Wi-Fi connection since. Doing it. Oh my goodness. It's not super loud. I mean, it's loud, but it's not like hurt my ears loud. To be honest, I've, I've had the Glowforge machine for about a week now, and it has probably been the most intimidating new venture I have ever undertaken in art. Not only is the machine huge and a hefty investment, but I mean, we're talking about working with lasers here. My biggest concerns before getting the machine were the smell and the noise that it makes, which ended up not being as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I think we're done. I think I can open this up. Oh, so it? Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. They're nice and clean. And the cutest little piece. Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh, 
so cute. Now it has the masking on it, so I'll have to remove the masking in a minute. A ton of things that I want to do with these, like in my dollhouse miniatures. Like, this is going to be so much fun. Like, it's going to be like a little birthday cake. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then you're supposed to be able to peel this off. So see how that just takes away all the burn marks? See how the scorchings? I'll have to read some tutorials on the best way to get this stuff up without like damaging your piece. Now to watch a bazillion more tutorials on making some things because have I got ideas. I got ideas for days. I just gotta figure out how to do it. So when you begin your Glowforge adventures or any, I guess any laser printing machine adventures, you can tackle it one of two ways. You can either use pre-made designs. Glowforge actually gives several for free each month or you can purchase them from other creators or, and which is what I wanted to do, make your own designs. See, I love the idea of turning my art into customized wooden puzzles, like where the pieces are their own individual unique shapes. In my mind, I thought I will just take my line art and obviously there's some sort of software that will just read the line art as lines to cut on and it will work perfectly, right? No, it's, it's a whole new thing that you have to learn. There's vector lines and converting to SVG files, and it's, it's a process, a new thing that I have to learn. This machine is really smart and super precise, and unless you give it the correct information, the product that it's going to produce will probably be something you never even realized it could do, and maybe something that you don't want it to do. Sorry, I forgot to actually film the cutting process of this, but yeah, it because it was a lot of trial and error. Um, I'll get this out of here in pieces, <laughs> and uh, then we will. I'll go over everything with you then. So, the problem I had with my initial design was that instead of cutting on the line art, the Glowforge took the line art as its own shape, and as you can see. It cut out the line art. It was so thin. It was like a like paper thin, but it still cut it out. I don't know how it did it, but it did, which amazing that this machine has that exact precision. The problem, and you'll see it later on as I put the puzzle together, instead of cutting on the line art, it cut the, the line art out. It made the spacing between the pieces a little too big. So yes, I can still put it together as a puzzle, but it's really loose and it doesn't work great. Another thing I learned is that tiny puzzle pieces aren't always fun. I had already lost one of the pieces and I hadn't even finished putting it together. I had to go find it, it fell on the floor. So in designing pieces in the future, I need to make sure that they are a good size, that they're not so tiny that you know, that you can't even hardly see them. So while I'm really new to this and I have a lot to learn, one of the biggest advices I can give people in this process is the advice I give people learning to just draw. And that's give yourself time to learn. It's okay to make mistakes. You learn from your mistakes and you're going to make a lot of mistakes. So if you're interested in following along in my Glowforge journey, make sure to be subscribed to this channel so that you can watch future updates. You can also follow along on my social media account. I'll have those all linked in the description box below. Plus, if you are yourself contemplating jumping into the Glowforge community and purchasing your first Glowforge, in the description box below, I have an affiliate link where you can save up to $500 off of your Glowforge machine, depending on what model you purchase. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me on this video adventure. As always, God bless you guys. Keep being creative. Allow yourself to learn, and we'll see you in the next art video. Bye-bye.